So before we start milling up our parts, we want to build a jig first. And this jig is going to be used on the front legs. Here's the jig. It's just a piece of hardwood that's been milled up square on four sides and then had some cuts made on the table saw. Uh, those cuts were a 12 degree angle right here followed by a 90 degree cut right here to release the material that was in this spot. What this does is it helps provide support for the front legs when we're mortising them into them either overhead with a router or with a hollow chisel mortiser or uh, by hand potentially. So in order to build this jig, what do we need? Well, we need a nice piece of hardwood. The next thing we need is a little piece of plywood. And we need this piece of plywood with at least one straight edge. These edges don't need to be straight, but one straight edge here. And we're gonna use this plywood. I uh, have this Incra protractor ruler. So our angle cut's gonna be at 12 degrees. So we're going to use this to draw our a 12 degree uh, points on this piece of plywood where we can then use our bevel gauge to pull that and set up off of this, pull that 12 degrees and set up our table saw for our cuts. I'll have dimensions and the plans for you for the jig, but basically it needs to be long enough that it'll support most of the length of the leg. So the first thing we want to do is we want to take our square and this um, this side right here was my reference side so I know this side is perfectly straight I actually took it over to the jointer real quick and I just very lightly jointed this bottom edge so since I know that side is straight I'm going to take my ruler or my square that for that matter and just make a nice line right here. Okay, so the first thing we are going to do is take our Incra ruler and line it up so that our line that we strike with our square is right down the 90 degree center hole or lines here. And then the next thing we want to do is take um, or make a mark that is 12 degrees off of 90. So we're here are 5, 10, and then 2 over is 12. And then on this side, 5, 10, 2 over is 12. Those two marks are going to help us make our little our lines. So I'm going to take my uh, ruler here, put my pencil into the indent I made, and with that there, I'm just going to move it over until I'm just seeing uh, a pencil mark on this side. And now, I can draw a line, and this is now 12 degrees. And then we'll do the same thing over here on the bottom. Once again, I take my pencil with my lead out and put that into the line that I drew before. Move my roller until I can just see pencil there. And now I can strike a line. So with those two lines struck, uh, striked, I now have the ability to come in here with my bevel gauge, open the bevel gauge up, and pull off 12 degrees from this board, this being the reference edge. Okay, we made our lines here, and we set our bevel gauge at 12 degrees, which is great. We don't need it quite yet. So what's really uh, important about this is that now we have a reference that we can constantly refer to when we need it. So we'll need this reference here to help us set up uh, our table saw for making our cuts at 12 degrees. 
and it's just a great place we can come back and at the same time we can always come here and verify what our uh, bevel gauge is set at. So you may drop it or bang into it or something and you can come back and verify that angle and reset it if you need to. Okay, we're over here at the jointer and before we do anything on the jointer, uh, I'm going to check my fence and see if it's set 90 degrees to the, the beds. Um, so I've got a Incro guaranteed square square here and a set of feeler gauges. So what I like to do is take my square, place it on the bed, find the smallest feeler gauge I have, which is 0 0.0015 thousandth of an inch, and take my square, push it against the fence, but not too hard, not to where I'm tipping it or anything like that, but just until we make contact. And then take my feeler gauge and see if I can push through. And I can't push through. So, and nor can I see any light coming from the edges either. So that tells me that I'm square. Okay, well we've got this board uh, squared up on three sides. Actually, since I have my crosscut sled all set up right now, I'm going to just square off the ends and then I'm going to go rip it. Okay, so back over here at the table, we have our piece um, all dimensioned out. We have it four sides that are all square to each other. And now what we need to do is we need to draw our reference line for the next series of cuts that we need to make. Was well, we drew our first line right here, which is 5 16 of an inch up from the bottom. Our second line we drew was right here, which is two inches in from the right to the left right here. The third line we drew was our 12 degree angle right here. And with these three drawn, that gives us our waist area right here. So over here at the table saw, I have my board and I have my bevel gauge and I changed out my throat insert for one that I've used for cutting bevels or angles. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna set the blade 12 degrees to the left. Okay, so what we're looking to do is I first raise the blade as high as possible. And then next what we're gonna do is loosen our blade uh, angle adjustment. And start tilting that over. And what we don't want is we don't want the piece of metal on the bevel gate to touch a tooth. That's going to screw us up, so we want to be on the plate and not on the tooth. And just to be safe, I'm going to grab some feeler gauges. I think I'm there, but I want to make sure. Okay, I grabbed my feeler gauges. Let me bring that thousandth of an inch one out. It doesn't look like I can get through. Our next step is to dial in a height for the top of this cut. I'm going to lower the blade. And then look what I'm doing right now is I'm going to rotate the blade a little bit. And it looks like I'm just below my line for the top cut right here. That's great. So now that I have that height set up, what I can do is move my fence over and line up my cut. Now, just to be safe and sorry, um, what I'm actually going to do right now 
is just bring this down just a hair. And I'm also going to move the fence over a sixteenth of an inch to the left. What that does is it now puts my blade uh, just to the a little bit to the right of the line. And that way I can I'll do a test. I'll come in a little bit, see if we're good as far as the height's concerned. And actually what I'm gonna do at that point too is if I like the height, I'm gonna do an entire pass on the piece. Once I do an entire pass on the piece, I'll move the fence over a little bit and I'll do another pass right on the line. And what I'm doing there is I'm giving the table saw less material to have to deal with as far as cutting um, this, making this first cut. The less material we have to deal with, the less work the saw has to do and the more accurate the cut's going to be. Okay, I changed my throat plates out again and brought my blade back up and even though I have a 90 degree set on the table, I still took my square and my feeler gauges and made sure I was at 90 again. So since I'm at 90 again, I'm going to set these aside. And the next thing we need to do is we need to set up this next cut. And in order to set up this next cut, what we want to do is we want to figure out what the height is. We can uh, rotate the blade and find that height. Now, the one thing I do want to say about this cut is it may be a good idea to make this cut just a little bit too deep. You know, I'm talking about maybe a 32nd inch, a fat 32nd of an inch. And the reason for that is it gives the sharp point of the leg a place to go into. Now that I have a good height set, what I want to do is bring my fence over and find out where we're going to cut. Okay, we just finished making the jig for uh, the joinery for our front legs, which is great. Now what we're going to do is the milling on our front and our rear legs. Now is, I'm going to take these over to the jointer and mill them up, jointer planer machine. But I also printed out another one of the drawings from the plans that gives me the dimensions for these parts. So I have dimensions for the parts individually as well as in a larger picture like this picture here from the SketchUp model. So just so you guys know, these are an inch and three-eighths of an inch wide in all four dimensions, so each side. Uh, even though they're 12 degrees, it's still an inch and three-eighths from that measurement and an inch and three-eighths in this measurement, the width um, as well as the depth. Uh, the final piece is going to be 25 and a half inches long the, or tall. The rear legs are four inches wide in the rough. Well, not in the rough, but they're a little bit wider than four now, but we will rip these to four inches wide, and we need that four inches to help us for our curve from the leg. And then they need to be an inch and seven eighths thick here, which equals uh, one inch or 1.875 and the three eighths here is 1.375. I just wanted to add something real quick. The dimensions for the rear legs are one and seven eighths of an inch wide or 1.875. That 1.875, hopefully you can get it when you are jointing and planing it. And if you can't get to 1.875, um, that's okay, but what you really want to do is, let's, let's just talk about this for a second. The part that matters for you the most, okay, is the part over here where the joinery happens. So either where the rails come into the leg here, or the rails for the rear apron, I mean, connect back here. And then over here, we're obviously trying to be as thick as we possibly can. 
but what and we're not going to template route this just yet we have a whole bunch of we have a mortise that we have to cut up here before then but nonetheless um, what we want to do is have as much wood as we possibly can on this side so with that in mind try not to go below 1.875 if you get to 1.875 and you still have a couple of rough patches on the side that's not going to be um, the inside of the leg that's okay So for both of these rear legs, I was um, I was jointing them, and as, as I was going through, I had my dial calipers out, and I was checking what the thickness of the board was as I was making my passes. And uh, basically, what it came down to was I was I didn't have enough material to even attempt to plane the other side, to be frank. You know, right down here, I'm at 1.79, 1.879, sorry. And up here, I'm at 1.875. And you can tell if you take a look at this board, I wasn't able to joint its entire length. I've got just about everything here, and I had this little part back here I didn't do. And that's okay. So if you take a look at this, you'll see that the pattern starts um, down here, and I don't have any of this wood that I'm dealing with at all. And so what that means is this side here is going to have to be an inside of one of the rear legs. It can't be the, the outside, because we need something that's flat and square on two sides. So I'm going to set these guys aside, uh, flip over into the planar mode, and plane down these front legs. Okay, we're back at the table saw now, and I've did a little bit of setup ahead of time. I have a roller stand at the outfeed section of the table because I don't have an outfeed table and these parts are, for the rear legs, are pretty long, rough, even when they're final cut. So I got that set up, um, I've got my riving knife back in, I've got the blade just a little bit higher than the uh, piece and we're going to rip, we're going to make two cuts for each rip. So the first cut we're going to make is just a little bit thicker than four inches, like four inches and a sixteenth um, for both. Then we'll come back into the final one. I have uh, a saw stop contractor saw, you know, one and three quarters horse, and I try to baby it a little bit as much as I can or when it makes sense. So for this, I'm going to baby it. I'm going to do one cut, allow it to um, work a little bit harder, on the complete thickness and then we'll come back for this uh, board and then just take the four inches off and it won't work as hard and we'll have a cleaner cut. Okay, so here's what we need to do with the front legs. First of all, for my board here, I have the correct thickness which is one and three eighths inch here. Um, however, I need to now create a piece out of here at a 12 degree angle that will then give us the thickness um, one and three eighths inch this way as well. There we go, that's good. And the same process as before, we're just going to tilt the blade and we're going to get set up for our first cut. First of all, the blade's too high, so let's drop that down a little bit. And if we take a look at least my board here, I have a wide board, you could have cut yours into separate pieces um, but nonetheless I got my whiteboard here so I'm going to want to move my fence over so I make my first cut around here and I remove this side of the waist. Okay we have our first cut done and we have uh, this 12 degree angle right here which is great. 
So this 12 degree angle here is going to establish the reference point for our next cut, which will be against the fence. Now with my fence, just as a point of reference, um, it doesn't touch the uh, top of the table saw. It's raised up a little bit. So you got to take that in mind, for me at least, because the tip of the piece is going to be underneath the fence. And so an inch and three eighths on my, uh, my, on my fence setting is not really an inch and th three eighths. It's actually less. going to now cut our rear legs and front legs to length. So I have a printout here from the plan and in the plan printout here it shows that my front legs are 25 and a half inches long and my rear legs are 40 inches long. 